Hey everyone, this is Jeff Tomlinson, your Northern Utah real estate expert. I wanna thank you for joining me on this video and I hope you find it very valuable, offers you a lot of good information, especially you sellers. And that's what this video is primarily about, is for sellers, because I get asked all the time, hey, I want to sell my home for the most amount of money. How do I do that? Well, who doesn't, right? Everybody wants to sell their home for the most amount of money. Well, we're gonna talk about some of the things that I help my sellers do and to encourage them to follow those things will greatly improve their odds of getting the highest possible offer, which every seller wants, right? So it, by following these guidelines and recommendations, I've found out over the years that people can average anywhere between five and up to 20% more. I had a gal who got $80,000 more than she thought because she strictly followed the procedures, the recommendations, and everything we asked her to do, she did. And she was amazed and we were fortunate enough to get such a great offer. Anyhow, I wanna go on from there and tell you about some of the things that I feel is very important for sellers to do, okay? So this is part one out of three parts of information I'm gonna be providing. And this part is about the presentation of the home. Now there are three key elements to selling any home, which I've found over the years. And they are the price, the promotion, and the presentation. And the seller's primary responsibility is the presentation of the home. I as an agent can only do so much, so it's really up to the sellers to take action on the things that I recommend them to do. So that's what we're gonna talk, talk about. So when I go visit with the seller, they're gonna ask me, so hey Jeff, what do you think my home's worth? And everybody asks that question. Well, my job is to do the very best I can based upon the homes that have sold or are under contract and active, because I wanna provide to them a past, present, and future value option. So we look at it and try to get very close to the exact home so I can give them a real accurate dollar figure on that. Then I wanna say, okay, now, if you would like to know how much more you can get from a home, let's look at other homes that have had some improvements done it. And then once we've looked at that, we can compare and see if it's worth making those improvements. Because ultimately it comes down to the seller taking responsibility of that. And then the final question is what's the most important thing to them? Either it's time or money. And they have to tell me which one and then we'll base the plan off that. So if they got some money and resources in it, then let's go down that avenue. If not, then we'll just have to deal with what we have. So follow me on this guide and this adventure and this journey we're gonna go about. And I'll just go over some of these things uh, very quickly because I have a guide that I provide to my sellers, which is 100 points. And these points are things that they can do to the home. They don't have to be very expensive and go as expensive as they want. However, I try to keep them very affordable because who wants to put a bunch of money into the home, especially if you don't have it? But if they do, well, that's another option as well. Now, according to the National Association of Realtors, that 65%, and it's probably higher than that now, because this was a couple years ago, of all buyers go on the internet to check out homes through any kind of electronic device that they have. So if that's the case, people are visually driven. So we wanna make sure we deliver to those buyers great looking images and pictures of the home because if it doesn't look nice, guess what? They ain't coming, right? And the seller's gonna be upset and say, how come I'm not having any showing, no offers and so on and so forth? Well, that's because we're not showing them something that they wanna come and see. So that's why it's really, really important that we get our ducks in a row before we start marketing the home. If we don't, then we're gonna attract crappy buyers, get crappy offers, and the whole process is just gonna go in the trash. So let's try to avoid that by doing the right things. Cause the sellers only have one chance to impress the buyer. And if we can't wow them at first, guess what? We're not gonna get any wow offers. So we need to keep that in mind, okay? So here's some of the recommendations that I suggest to my sellers. Let's start on the outside of the home because that's the first thing the sellers are gonna see, or excuse me, the buyers are gonna see when they pull up, okay? So we gotta try to get that wow factor going. So if you are a person or a homeowner that has a lawn, you need to mow it, take care of it, trim it, make it look nice, presentable, okay? Edge around the gardens and the walkways. And these are obviously seasonal things because during the winter, 
We don't really have these options, but when we do, we need to take care of them and clean and repair anything on the patios, decks, anything like that that uh, has any amenities around it. So just tidy up if you would. And then we need to repaint any kind of surfaces that are flaking because if we are marketing to buyers who are gonna use a VA or FHA loan and they have these issues, they can't buy the home until they're repaired. And if you as a seller aren't willing to do that, then that just takes a bunch of buyers away from the potential sale of your home. So make those improvements because they're gonna be required. Plus, once again, increase the value of the home. We also wanna look on the roof for damage or missed shingles because if a buyer sees that, then that's gonna cause some concern. Plus, during the inspection process, they say that, hey, that roof needs to be replaced because look, it's got missing shingles. Buyer immediately thinks thousands and thousands of dollars when a seller could have taken care of the issue before we ever started it and probably only did it for a couple hundred bucks, but now it's becoming a significant issue for the buyer to overcome. So take away an obstacle, right? And you wanna repair any broken windows uh, because those two are an FHA requirement as well as VA. So replace those and, and anything that's torn or tattered, just haul it off, get rid of it. And the main thing that you gotta do is paint the front door if it needs it or clean it up because that's the first thing that they're gonna see when they walk into the home. They're gonna be looking at that door as somebody's unlocking it for them. And if you can, do a power spray. Man, power spray is gonna make the house shine. You know, it gets rid of all the dust and grime, cobwebs and everything else. And so do it because it's really not that expensive, all right? So here's some general tips I recommend. First off, clean and remove all odors or smells that animals might have. Because in my experience, I had met and seen and watched a $275,000 cat. And what do you mean by that? Well, I was the selling agent on a property and these homeowners love this cat, which is cool. However, some of the buyers who had allergies didn't. In fact, I watched a young man walk into that house and within eight seconds, his eyes were watering up because he was immediately allergic to the cats and the home ultimately did not sell just because of that single issue. So take those issues away. Carpets are a significant cost to a home. So if the carpets look uh, worn and tattered and stuff like that, you might be able to get away with cleaning them. If you can, uh, do it because it's a cheap way to resolve that issue. If not, we might have to look at replacing the carpets, but that's one option. So you wanna clean out any of your closets and uh, e extra areas by packing up clothes, items, and th things that you simply don't need and put them in the garage because the buyers don't care what's in the garage. All they care is, will my car fit? And that's it. So just take them out there, put them in there, write on there what it's for. They won't even give it a second thought. So remove any extra furniture that's uh, in the room and stuff like that because we wanna create an image that the rooms are big and large and too much furniture will actually make them look smaller, which we might be causing a problem for the buyers, okay? And any kind of worn rugs or other torn uh, items, uh, damaged things, maybe toys are out, maybe other kind of uh, equipment that you don't need, get rid of them, remove them, because your ideal situation you're trying to create is a home that is like a model home. That's a home where you know the builders have built and it's just you walk in there and like, wow. Well, it's the same thing we're trying to do with the seller's home, okay? So also repair uh, easy things such as doorknobs, uh, cracks and moldings, uh, leaky taps, uh, toilets that might be leaking, squeaky doors, um, anything like that that just doesn't look right. Uh, edges on the door frames and walls sometimes get damaged and chipped. Just take a minute, do it right though. Don't just kind of do it halfway because it'll make it worse and get it done. Wash down all your dirty surfaces where your hands normally touch and stuff because people are gonna see that, okay? And do not try to cover up the home if it has smells with incense and other kind of things because it'll become obvious when they walk in there like, wow, what's going on here? You know, people aren't stupid, so don't treat them like they're stupid, okay? The next primary area, which is the most important important area I think in any home and according to the gals I'll tell you is the kitchen. So this is where all the money's at and it's where they spend a lot of time okay. So make sure all the appliances are spotless both inside and out. 
Wash the floors, the baseboards, the countertops, and make them look nice. Remove any magnets, photos, other things that you guys commonly put on the fridge. Just get rid of them. We don't need them, right? They don't add value, so let's take them down. So remove cups, pots, pans, and other items off the countertops. Declutter that place, okay? Clean up the sink. Sometimes we go in there and there's food and stuff piled all up in the sink and that, and it stinks. Get rid of it, put it in the trash and take it out. And one quick easy thing to do is you can throw a lemon in the disposal, turn it on and, and give that nice smell throughout the kitchen, okay? It's pleasant and it's not covering of other uh, smells that might exist. Next, go to the bathrooms and remove all rust, mildew, water spots, and soap scum, okay? That's commonly left there because of everyday use, but you gotta put a little bit of time and effort to remove them. And then make sure that the tile, fixtures, shower doors, and other surfaces are, are immaculate and shiny and don't have a bunch of grime and mold and everything on them, okay? Just a major turnoff. Eliminate the smells in this area. We know it has a high potential for that, so get rid of them the best you can and make sure you flush the toilets. As simple as that may seem, I've seen it where it, people leave surprises, okay? The next thing is the bedrooms. So organize your furniture to create a spacious look if you can. A well-defined seating area, sleeping area, the dressing area, if it's like in the master room, clean them up, make them look nice. Organize and minimize any clutter in the closets because that could represent to the buyers that you don't have enough storage and the gals will tell you if there's not enough storage for their uh, clothes and shoes and everything else that's a turnoff and we don't want that to happen to our sellers remove all articles of clothing that might be laying on the bed on the uh, um, a chair or somewhere else I've seen things that you want to see laying around everywhere okay so put those things away and then finally make the beds. As simple as that may see, seem, people often don't do it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some quick examples of photos of before and after. And just to give you an idea, the huge impact it'll make on the buyers if they come in there and see that. So let's go through that and I'm gonna quickly show them to you. Here you go. Wow, can you see the difference with all those? It's crazy, right? And that's what they're gonna see when they look at your home, whatever, it's the phone, computer, the iPad, it doesn't matter. We want them to go, that's the home I gotta go see, all right? So, uh, which uh, brings me to the last part of this is that our whole objective on my team is to get the sellers the most amount of money possible, right? And to do that, you've got to follow what we suggest to you. We got, I've got over 17 years in the business. And I'm telling you, if you follow it, you will benefit from it. And finally, we got to make sure you get hired a professional photographer. I've seen people walk around with their, their iPhones and other digital devices and snapping up pictures here and there. And I've seen pictures of like the laundry room when it's a mess, out in the garage it's a mess, the basement, the wall. I mean, it just, it's, just looks like crap. You don't want to put that stuff out there representing your home. Okay, so there's a reason we hire the best. So I hope that you find this part one and this three part series of videos helpful and useful. And remember, I'm always here for you, especially you sellers in this situation. There's tons more information and we only went over a little list. There's a lot more recommendations I could make to you. So subscribe to my YouTube channel, get a hold of me through my email, text, phone, whatever works for you. I'm here and hope you guys have an awesome day. We'll see you next time.